What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today I think I want to take a trip out to Micro Center and get a nice vlog going on because I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling like it's time to upgrade my PC behind me, you know? So I originally built that PC back in 2019, and I have changed and evolved the hardware since then as more stuff's come out, but I think it's time for a new case and just, you know, give it a more modern 2021 to 2022 upgrade and uh, no better place to do that than tech heaven itself, Micro Center. So uh, let's hit the road. All right, so I'm on my way now. It's about like 45 minutes, not too bad. Uh, but I stopped at Starbucks to uh, fuel my ride and I got their iced apple crisp latte and it tastes like apple pie. You can make fun of me all you want. It is delicious. Highly recommend. Oh yeah, that's too good, too good. Let's get back on the road. All right, so I just pulled up the Micro Center, gonna go get some components and stuff. And I haven't been to Micro Center in six years. It was after I graduated college in 2015. I actually did a vlog back then when I was first like starting the channel. So it got like no views at all, but I'm pretty sure it was this location because there's not many by me. This is the closest one to where I live now. And six years ago, I was living back home. And I still think this was the closest one then, but um, I don't know, I'm gonna go in, check it all out, get some hardware, get that PC upgrade going. They literally have it all. Again, tech heaven, that's why it's coined that. And it's really cool because literally every single um, piece of hardware and component has its own like section or aisle. So you can start off, you know, pick up your power supply, move your way over to, you know, RAM, all the motherboards they have, your CPUs, GPUs, it's all in shelves. There's a whole section for like cooling and stuff. Obviously a ton of water cooling components, which is really cool to see. Every fitting you can think of, a bunch of tubes, different radiators, um, everything here. Tons of stuff from EKWB, which is definitely cool to see. You know, have it all on display. Um, and then obviously all your cases. So literally, Every piece of hardware you're gonna need for your build is all on the one side of the storage. So you can go through and uh, pick up everything you want and then, you know, end it with your case and then just check right out, right there. It's all right here for you. Whoops. All right, so one of the upgrades is gonna be a new case. Got a new NVMe SSD because uh, my old one that I use for a boot drive just needs more space. They get 256. So I wanted to upgrade now to a two terabyte 980 Pro. Uh, got a bunch of these Leon Lee fans. They're really nice because they're white, crazy RGB, and they're magnetic, so it's gonna go perfectly with the new case. And since our new case is also much smaller form factor, we need an SFX power supply, so I got the newer V850. It's their uh, the Cooler Master SFX version, and it is the new revised 2021 model, so it's not gonna have those uh, the fan ramping issues, thankfully. And actually, some more stuff on the way. Okay. So just leave a micro center. I wanted to vlog more in there, you know, but even though it's 2021, vlogging is still like kind of awkward around people. And there was a pretty good amount of foot traffic in there. Like there was more people uh, than I definitely thought. Like out of all the times I've gone to Best Buy in the last year or so, uh, there was way more people in micro center right now. And um, even though like, they knew I was there vlogging, like to do this video, it was just, just so awkward for the people who didn't know me or what was going on, just the regular customers. And they were also doing some construction in the back, kind of giving, I guess, like a facelift inside. So uh, it was kind of loud at some points, but you know, I got the footage that I could, but I still just wish it wasn't personally awkward to film in front of people. <laughs> <sighs> oh, hey. It's actually been three months <laughs> since I first started this video. Uh, that was beginning of September where we left off when I first started the vlog in Micro Center. It's now December 1st. So I'll explain, we'll get into the build. Uh, like I told you as I was talking to the trunk of my car, uh, we had more stuff on the way. Obviously with the hardware shortages, things have gotten delayed and uh, everything's in. So we can kick off the build, <laughs> finally. Okay, so first up, I'll be switching to the Lian Li O11 Dynamic Mini Case. This is their all white snow edition that is compact and super clean looking, especially when we add those mods coming up in a bit that I'll show you. We're just gonna transform this case into something a little bit more exciting. Nice. For our CPU, I'm going with the Intel i9 11900K. 
Now, yes, this chip is older at this point. I know we just had the Alder Lake CPUs announced. Again, this video is a few months in the making, and honestly, I'm content with the 11900K as it is. I bought a new motherboard for this, and if I were to go Alder Lake, I'd have to get another motherboard. It's just not worth it. Bad timing. Feels bad, man. Now, real quick, just to address it, because I always see comments about this when I do an Intel build. People ask, why not AMD? And uh, it's not like I have a preference or a bias. In fact, if you've watched the channel for a while, I would say like the last probably three or four builds that I've done have all been AMD. It was just over the years, I've usually kept my main workstation as Intel for, you know, editing and gaming. And when I do dedicated gaming builds, those are always just pretty much AMD. So AMD for gaming, Intel for my main workstation. Um, no real reason, honestly. In fact, if you compare the 11900K versus what I was gonna use, the 5900X, which I did use in a Fantex build over the summer, which is I think the last one we did, uh, they're pretty much neck and neck. So honestly, no real reason. It's just what we're going with here. That'll all be going on the Gigabyte Z590 Vision G. There is just not enough white PC hardware on the market, but Gigabyte is one company that does and does it right. This motherboard is gonna look glorious inside the build and has all the features I'll need going forward. Keeping the build nice and frosty is the NZXT Kraken Z53 RGB. This is their newer all white AIO. See what I did there? Frosty, white, cool. Hello? But yeah, again, a nice AIO with an all white radiator and tubing. It's got the OLED screen for monitoring temps or showing GIFs, all that good stuff. Now, going along with that throughout the build, I'm gonna be using the Lian Li Uni fans. These are the AL120 RGB models. Aesthetically, they're gonna fit the build perfectly and highlight it with some crazy cool RGB that's all synced throughout. And again, since our case is Lian Li, it's just the perfect match. These have a really cool mounting method with pogo pins and a daisy chain, so you only need one cable instead of one cable for each fan. They're gonna make the case really, really pop and also be great for cable management. For some extra white hardware and RGB goodness that'll most likely just keep white so we don't have a seizure, from T-Force, I picked up 128 gigs of their extreme ARGB RAM with the all white stick and the RGB dim. It's gonna look crazy and all white and obviously 128 gigs. is gonna be a nice bump for sure over my current 64 gigs. But also from T-Force is their Delta Max SSD that I'll be adding just for some extra additional storage. A nice compliment to my two terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD that I picked up from Micro Center. This is the Samsung two terabyte 980 Pro that I'll use as a boot drive and I'll most likely also carry over my current NVMe drive that I have in my build right now. Again, for extra storage that I have like game save to and stuff. And then again, the reason this video has been delayed because of those damn hardware shortages, my Gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti Vision GPU has finally arrived. Uh, last December, I did a 3080 build and this one here is a decent upgrade for sure. Still couldn't find the Vision 3090, unfortunately, but again, it's an upgrade at that for my current build and easily one of the nicest looking GPUs on the market. Powering everything in our O11 Dynamic Mini case since we need an SFX PSU is the V850 from Cooler Master. Like I told you in the Micro Center parking lot, this is the updated model without the fan ramping issues. And 850 watts will definitely give us enough power to efficiently run the build. It's small and compact enough to get tucked away behind the case's back panel. And since it's fully modular, you already know, Gonna top off the all white hardware with some white braided cables. These are from Antec and it's their fully sleeve cable kit for that extra matching factor and goodness. All right, so finally, we can begin the build now and kick off the new workstation for the channel.
All right, so our Mr. Freeze PC build in the Leon Lee O11 Dynamic Mini Snow Edition case is finally done. It's actually the following day at night because you know how it is when you first, you know, get a PC up and running. There's drivers, there's updates, the whole process of installing Windows. Nice. It takes forever, but it's done. And as you can see behind me, looking pretty nice. Now, as much as I love the crazy RGB and stuff, odds are I'm gonna keep it either all white so it's super nice and clean or like a light blue again they kind of feed into that mr freeze sort of build i have going on now you may have noticed and as you probably saw when i said before i'm going to spice it up a bit i'm going to be adding a display to the front of the case and actually that front right now is already a screen i know it's out of focus but you get the idea you can see it going in the background so that front glass panel on the case is literally the perfect dimensions to fit a 14 inch portable display. And that's exactly what we did here. I picked up this one from Wimaxit, that's a name for you. And I cannot take credit for this idea whatsoever. I actually saw um, a YouTuber, Matthew Mora do it and I was blown away. It looks so good and as a final result, I'm digging it. So shout out to him for the idea, but I'll show you what I have going on with the configuration. So what I actually did was I filmed how the actual interior would look. So you know, just the actual internals, how it would appear without a display in front of it. In Premiere then, I made a new project in the, you know, vertical portrait aspect ratio. And then from there, I added some sort of like overlay effects to give the PC front panel just a really cool dimension. Things like, you know, um, acid drops going over or like some cool ink effect to make it look like 3D or something's, you know, physically just coming out of the case inside, just things like that. Get it all nice and frosted. Throw in some visual bubbles and stuff to make it like it's underwater, giving the whole, you know, water-cooled PC a brand new meaning here. And the final result just really opens up the PC to a lot of flexibility when it comes to, you know, visuals and stuff, which I am all for. And then obviously I can create new effects and create new just animations to put on the screen. So when you guys, you know, see it, you know, behind me during these A-roll shots like this. Now, in terms of how I set it up, I had to pick up a right angle mini HDMI adapter and a right angle USB-C cable. The monitor itself is powered by USB-C and obviously it needs to be connected to the graphics card to transfer that video signal. So in the bottom of the case, I have both the cables routed sort of on the back side, out of sight, and then it comes up on the left side behind where our GPU is vertically mounted, up through the motherboard, and then out the back side of the case. So the cables reach the back I.O. no problem, and it's not visually seen. When you're looking at the PC straight on, you can't see where those cables are coming out. Yes, it's not going to be perfect if you're viewing this from like the side since I shot it straight on. You can also see some of the bezels and stuff, but those are things I could work on later on down the road. And if you're wondering how I have it all configured with the monitors just spanned across all four, I'm using Wallpaper Engine. So I have that snowy sort of mountain one spanned across my three ultra wides. They're all grouped up for one wallpaper. And then I grouped up a second wallpaper with the vertical uh, display there and have a separate wallpaper running on there. So I could again, make a bunch of different presets and a bunch of different effects and animations and have them saved in Wallpaper Engine. And then just what I'm gonna go to film, put a different one up and make it look pretty cool. Now some other changes I made that I didn't just flat out tell you or show you guys yet is with our 11 dynamic mini case, I did pick up a vertical mount uh, for our GPU. So that bracket inside, that whole cage pretty much is a separate purchase and it is PCIe 4.0 for it as well. Since it's a larger card and a relatively smaller case, it does take up, you know, most of the visuals from that side panel since it is just right there, right in front of you, but that's okay. It still looks nice. And just from so far from my tests and stuff and monitoring, uh, temps are not a concern as of right now. I'll still keep an eye on it because the way I have all the fans set up on the bottom is an intake. So it's taking cool air in, pushing it up through the shroud and the heat sink of the GPU, which is then blowing the hot air out. Same with our AIO. The fans on the right side are pushing the hot air out of the radiator. And again, with those three bottom mounted fans that I have, it's taking all that hot air and blowing it up. And the three ones that I have mounted on the top of the case are dispelling and dispersing that hot air out of the case. So temps so far, like I said, in my very limited testing, because it takes forever to get everything installed and downloaded and updated, you know how it is, you know how it is, um, so far has been good. And then the last little change I made is with the uh, T4 Delta SSD. Instead of having it lying flat, I just now have it vertically mounted so I could see it from the side. And even though that has RGB and stuff as well, I'm still probably just gonna keep that white. Man, I just love the all white build in here. It looks so good. <laughs> 
So guys, that'll wrap it up now. This video spanned three months, and I think at this point, I can call it a night. So again, brand new build, updated hardware, the little screen modification. Again, shout out to Matthew Moore for the idea. I'm absolutely loving it. Now, I would do more in-depth benchmarks and stuff like that right now, but I have to download way more games. I only have like two installed right now, so that's gonna take so much more time. If you are interested in that, you wanna see how it performs, let me know down below. I'll possibly put out a part two of this video showing you the performance, the upgrades, and the benchmarks of our new Mr. Freeze PC case. So that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll have all the hardware and stuff for you listed in the description down below in case you wanna check it out and add some things to your PC. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day. Hello. Welcome to the Dummy Index, a table of contents for some of you dummies out there. Now, whenever I do these builds, I get a lot of dumb questions from the dummies, things that are obvious things that are clearly explained to you in the video that you didn't watch before commenting. So we're gonna run through real quick, answer your dumb questions, okay? Just on time, a question from dummy number one. Stupid random Frank P, you forgot the thermal paste on your CPU, LOL. It's funny that you're laughing at that, because I clearly showed you the thermal paste has been pre-applied to our AIO. Wake up, welcome to the future, where nine times out of 10, thermal paste is already pre-applied, which is why I showed you. You dummy. And would you look at that, dummy number two strolling right in here with another dumb question. LOL, random Frank P, your GPU fans aren't even spinning. Looks like someone messed up. Maybe your GPU is faulty. I think your brain's a little faulty, to be honest, because I don't know, the last, seven, eight years, most GPU fans don't spin unless the PC is under load. Or, you know, you're doing something other than just running nothing on your desktop. The fans won't spin. There's no need to. It's been like that. Oh, what was that? A follow-up question about the GPU? You're laughing about what? The, the GPU sag? Oh, that's kind of interesting. Because no, this GPU is shader than me when I'm walking out of your mom's house at three in the morning. Tell her I said hi. He's like, we have another question rolling in. Laughing about the Cooler Master PSU being bad and having issues. It's almost as if you have issues. So I said twice, it's the updated 2021 version without the fan ramping problem. It's been fixed. You should get fixed. Well, dummies, that'll about wrap up our little seminar for today. If you found yourself here, and probably a few friends as well, you should all go outside and get some fresh air. You need it. You need it.